The New York Institute for All Hazards Preparedness has an extensive history in drill design and implementation. Drills have been created to evaluate the care of vulnerable populations by assessing, for example, pediatric decontamination after a dirty bomb. Other New York Institute for All Hazards Preparedness drills looked at mass casualty events by assessing the response to an explosion in the New York City subway system. The following video illustrates one example of the types of projects the New York Institute for All Hazards Preparedness has engaged in. The possibility of a mass casualty event is very real. Communities around the world are regularly preparing for such an event. Should the possibility of an influenza pandemic become a reality, hospitals will have to cope with a massive influx of patients. A pandemic of the magnitude of 1918 is expected by many experts. It will cause severe illness and affect many more people than seasonal influenza. The Cover Your Cough drill conducted in July 2008 was designed to assess the effectiveness of several proposed interventions aimed at delaying disease transmission in the healthcare setting. We tested mass screening for potentially contagious persons before entering hospitals and separating them in designated areas of the hospital, hoping to limit exposure of uninfected patients and employees. Infection control practices, which if used properly, are known to limit potential person-to-person -person spread of disease. Increasing staff knowledge of infectious agents in order to improve patient outcomes. Three participating hospitals in the drill were asked to implement a mass screening protocol and a staff education effort on infection control. The evaluation process captured differences in the implementation of these tasks and their final influence on the outcome variables. We have been planning since last October to look at policies and procedures that we wrote over the last three years to deal with a communicable disease. We wanted to know if these new policies and new um, ways of going about taking care of patients would work. And so this was a test of the protocols that we wrote. We chose pandemic flu as the communicable disease, but we believed that any communicable disease could be used for this kind of um, tr policy and mapping and treatment. We chose the scenario of pandemic influenza um, because it's a life-threatening illness that may affect large proportions of the population in New York City and we pretended that um, a large wave of um, sick people is coming to hospitals in this, um, in this neighborhood. And um, in order to um, make sure that um, those patients who are contagious do not infect other people in the hospital or healthcare workers, we um, developed a protocol that allowed um, a quick screening of those patients who are potentially infectious based on a case definition for influenza so that they could be sorted at the entrance of the hospital before they actually enter the emergency room and be sent to a um, um, cohorted area. We wanted to figure out if the hospitals could handle a large influx of patients, which we assume is going to be the case for a communicable disease, and how those patients would be screened and isolated, which was very important. We didn't want the people with the contagion to be with the people without the contagion, and then whether they could be triaged successfully. At that point, the drill ended. We didn't go into any treatment or disposition. I know it's something serious. Well, that's what we're here for. Okay? So, uh, we're going to give you this. 
bank coffee. Are you here now? The bank coffee. Bank no, it's right? not the flu. It's not the flu. Okay. I know it's something All right. So I'm going to send you inside. The nurse is going to evaluate you. You think you can put this on? I want you to put one strap behind your head, the other one on top yes. of your head. Am I going to see a doctor? Yes, yes you are. You're going to go inside, and nurse is going to finish evaluating you, and then you'll see the doctor, okay? Call me, sir, Feel please. better? Thank you. I'm seriously sick. Well, from the beginning, uh, it was more of a um, setting up strategic locations where patients can come in, and we're going to effectively uh, evaluate the patient. Uh, the more important part was, once the patients are identified, how to separate them into the correct areas and how to evaluate them in those areas. They had uh, some of the people slash actors acting difficult and what do you do with them as the person taking their information, what the police, I guess the police that are here do with them, people who are very sick, what do you do with them, people who are um, very questionable, what do you do with them, so um, it was kind of a an in-practice uh, lesson of how to manage patients um, running into your face one at a time. There were two other embedded parts of the exercise. One um, part of the embedded exercise was to look at critical care patients and to see what how they would be treated and whether or not actors were a better choice over simulators. Our hypothesis was that the simulators were going to be more realistic and real for um, drill purposes. Excuse us, we're coming through with a critical patient. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Anytime you work in emergency department, you always have to be prepared for any kind of disaster, uh, whether it's uh, a bomb exploding going off or if it's uh, multiple traffic accidents. Or in, and in this case, it was actually um, a viral infection, influenza pandemic, which people have talked about and are expecting in the coming years, so it's always good to be prepared for it. So the idea was to see how our system um, would respond to such uh, a response, to have so many patients come in with all sorts of different symptoms and how we would do as, as a team, how we would organize ourselves. And um, my specific area, which was the critical care area, was uh, is designed where the sickest patients who have the worst effects from the flu come in and what we were trying to do was to rapidly stabilize these patients, what is what we do in the emergency room and, and get them on to more specialized care upstairs. The simulators are great. Um, I, I, it's definitely more you, you do more, you get more involved with simulators than you do with the, the kind of the fake patients or the patients with just something around their neck. You actually have to really um, get involved, you actually perform procedures on them, so it's definitely more like a real, real-time uh, experience. So definitely, I think all of us like simulators, it helps us become better f physicians. So. It's awesome. It's an awesome technology, it really is. It's the best thing that we can get to sort of replicate humans. It's a fantastic teaching tool. I guess what, what I think I learned most is that when you get the patient, just look at the patient in a whole. There was a lot of similar cases, but still, you have to look at the patient in a whole, what their vital signs are, how, and reassess, especially reassess. We always had to be asking, okay, what are the patient's vitals at this time? After every single thing that you did to make sure that you're going in the right track and is there anything else that you need to do? It definitely went well. It was definitely good for me educationally to see how a disaster would run. Even though it, you can never say this is exactly how it's going to be, it's, it's definitely good to be prepared for something like that where you're presented with so many patients at the same time. Definitely a big learning experience, but I think it went well. I think what, from how we were in the beginning, definitely saw a lot of improvement in the end. So like, it was a big learning curve. I felt a lot, I personally felt a lot more comfortable with the patients after seeing one or two and so I think it went well because basically you want people to learn from a drill and that's what ended up happening. It was very hectic. Um, trying to run, run one intubation is challenging enough to run three simultaneous intubations and be part of the staff actually doing the critical care uh, to be you know, one of the hands people is, uh, yeah it was 
very challenging, but it went well. I liked it. The other embedded um, drill was to see about communications between community health clinics in the area so that if there was an event, we could contact them and then have them help us with um, taking care of additional patients. Do you have a private doctor here? No. The hospitals were left to their own devices to come up with all the resources that are needed, and they did. And um, I think it um, was apparent, um, like was said before by others, that um, a lot of things happened during the drill that were not anticipated. And um, so a lot of times um, players in the hospital had to respond to that, had to um, make additional resources available. So I think some of these things um, in real life may or may not have happened because there is always a bit of artificiality when you send a lot of actors at the same time. But um, I think there are a lot of real life lessons that were learned and we also learned that um, this mass screening is actually feasible. Hospitals were able to implement it and I think that's the main finding of what we what was going on today. I think the public should take away that um, hospitals are working very hard on preparing their communities um, for, a, for an event like pandemic influenza or a similar contagious illness. And um, I think um, the public should also understand that um, the, the preparation requires um, an enormous effort. It's not easy. At, um, it's a big strain on hospitals and on the public in, in general. So it's, there's no magic tool. Um, everything that we do um, to, to help during such a situation requires a lot of work and effort. And eventually the public will, uh, should such a case um, arise, the public will have to help in making this happen. And um, of course at that time there will be information made available. If a disaster happens again, I think we have a uh, good uh, basis of what we can do and uh, we will be able to handle it effectively.